Hello everyone, my name is Laura. You're watching the Beanbird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. This morning when my husband woke up, he saw a rainbow in the sunrise and I'll post a picture. It's very beautiful. Unfortunately, the photo just never seems to do it justice. Uh, the pink was brighter than what shows up in the photo, but it's still stunning and it was a wonderful thing to wake up to. Yesterday, I had the privilege of sharing the testimony of my daughter, Ballet, and I had some extra thoughts that I wanted to add on that. Um, first, I wanna say that she gave her testimony of her own will. I asked her if it's something that she would like to do because she's a huge encourager of this channel. She's always asking me like, mom, did you do your video yet? And she's always encouraging me if I feel um, down in any way. She's like, you can do it, mom. You're making a difference. You know, she's just such a delight. And I asked her if she would like to do her testimony. And you know, her first response was, I don't really have a testimony. And I said, are you kidding me? You have the most amazing testimony of anybody I know. And she was like, really? Like in what way? And I was, I started showing her, um, you know, the things that happened and we recalled them and we spent time talking about them. And she said, you know what? I guess I do have a testimony. In fact, I have a really good one. And I thought I would draw that out because I think a lot of times um, it's not uncommon for people to say that they don't really feel like they have a good testimony. Um, but you do have a good testimony because you were dead and now you're alive in Christ. And that story needs to be told. And it is very exciting to people around you that aren't familiar with it. And um, the other thing is I was hesitant to post the video yesterday and I told her, I said, gosh, I feel really bad because in the beginning I talk about, you know, the way that you were and I feel bad saying negative things about you. And she said, you know what, mom, it's okay because that's the way I was, but that's not who I am now. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful. And then she went on to say that she was okay with people realizing who she was she said, because I want people's lives to be changed. And if sharing my story can make a difference, I want people to know my story. And I thought that was incredibly powerful. And um, I'm just, again, impressed with her spiritual maturity. And a lot of times in testimonies, um, like David's testimony, even my testimony, they're testimonies that take place gradually over time. And I think the reason why that's the case is because we surrendered a little bit at a time. Um, we gradually trusted the Lord with things. We gradually grew our faith and we, we gradually made that transition. And the more we gave to Jesus, the more our lives was changed. But with ballet's testimony, what makes it so special is, and that sharp contrast is that she went from like 0% committed to 100% committed. And she really went all in, 100%. And I really feel touched when I even see her baptism video because when you see her fall back into the water, she doesn't even bend her knees. She goes down, straight down like a board and comes up straight down, straight up. And she, it's very graceful looking. And I thought, wow, she was completely trusting in the man that was holding her up to, you know, bring her down and bring her up. She it was like a complete image of a trust fall. And um, she truly went from 0% committed to 100% committed and she was all in. And the other thing that was kind of interesting about her life change was I mentioned yesterday that it started with God giving me a dream um, to teach her how to pray. And that led to a dramatic salvation. And she has really shown that the Lord's favor is on her life in a very special and unique way. And my older kids who have been following the Lord, being honest, were telling me that they felt a little jealous. They're like, we've been following the Lord for years and years doing the right thing. How come we don't have dreams from God? How come she got chosen? She didn't do anything to deserve it. She didn't do anything to earn it. She was just this mean little person. And then God like poured out all his favor on her and she didn't do anything. And the answer is bingo. You hit the nail on the head. She didn't do anything. She didn't earn it. She didn't deserve it. But the Lord's love was poured out on her so richly. 
And I think that's why a lot of times God picks people who are unlikely candidates to show the size and magnitude of his grace. Um, when we see somebody do such a 180, it's like, wow, God's grace is so big, you know? And I had to remind my kids of the story of the brother of the prodigal son. A lot of times the emphasis is put on the prodigal son who drifted away from the Lord and how the father in that story welcomed him back by killing the fatted calf and um, pouring out you know, all these blessings. But the son that had stayed, the son that was loyal, felt like he was getting kind of ripped off because he's like, I've been tending your fields and you didn't you know, kill the fatted calf for me. And so I just want to read that verse here. It's, um, this is found in Luke 15, 25. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And when he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be, he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for many years I've been serving you and have never neglected a command of yours, and yet you have given me, never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and has now begun to live and was lost and now has been found. And we rejoice um, in what the Lord is doing. And we can truly see that when God reaches and, and down in such a loving, caring way to all of us who are undeserving, none of us deserve the Lord's favor, but he is so rich in his blessing that his glory is magnified. And I think that's why a lot of times, you know, he picks Saul, who became Paul, uh, Moses, who had murdered, um, and, and all the people that uh, were in the Bible that had huge flaws, um, you know, Rahab the prostitute. And the Lord showed his grace and mercy in these people. And it's a, a blessing to see God's favor poured out so richly. And it's just really amazing to see how God can change a life. And that it's possible for any one of us, anybody in our life that looks like not that person, right? They're, they're really messed up. It's like, no, even them, right? Uh, even the person that you've maybe kind of given up on or, um, you know, we've seen the testimonies of people who, there was this guy, he was um, a satanic cult temple leader in Africa and he completely gave his life to Jesus. And you think like, wow, I didn't see that coming. But when those stories come out, it's just awe-inspiring. And it reminds us that no one is too far from the reach of Jesus. And I think also it's a testimony of giving 100% to Jesus. Because you really do see a difference when you see somebody say, I'm all in, I'm surrendering everything, and just joyous abandon, like I'm letting it all go, I'm just gonna free for all, trust into Jesus. And you see the way that the Lord, you know, envelops, you know, that attitude. And it's just like, wow, um, we truly can free fall into the Lord's arms. We can trust him and no one is too far from the Lord's reach. If you have breath in your lungs, there is time for you. There is love for you. And we need to maximize that time and receive that love, right? Like, um, David's video, he said, grace is hard work. And of course, that's like a joke because it's not hard work, right? It's free and we don't have to do anything to earn it. But the hard work in his mind is getting to that point of surrender, right? That's hard to do sometimes, especially when we like to hold on to control. We want to have that control and releasing that control and trusting in um, God to take care of us. And it's harder when we've had experiences with people, humanity, and the world where we've been let down in the past 
And when we have those hurts of being let down by people or, you know, different, the job or world situation, it's like, oh, I've been burned. It makes it harder to trust. But God is bigger than the world and our past relationships and people that have let us down in the past because God won't let us down and he will hold us up and we can 100% just say, Lord, I give you everything. I trust in you. So that's it. Thanks.